We'll get started. Uh, greetings and welcome to today's National Consortium of Clinical Education Resource Sharing Webinar. These are exciting. Um, I'm Matt Calandrillo, the Vice Chair of NCC, and these webinars were born by members just like you uh, to bring kind of current real life resources that you're using in your own academic and or clinical institutions just in clinical education. We've heard about reflective practices, uh, simulation, IPE, and the list kind of goes on and on. Today, we're gonna to hear about an innovative concept in integrated clinical experience or ICE. And it's our hope that there's some nuggets in here that you can take from these webinars, uh, bring them back to, to your colleagues that can be modified and perhaps implemented into your own program in terms of what makes sense. Uh, these will always be free. These are uh, free kind of content webinars that ultimately get posted to the ACAPT uh, YouTube page. It's been great to see these getting traction on YouTube. I think the clinical education community is just so engaged. So we're seeing five, 600 views now on these posts, which means to me that they're absolutely getting in front of uh, the eyes of clinicians, which I think has always been the goal, which is just bringing more people to the, the ClinEd table. We encourage you to look at the resources that ACAP has on their different pages. If you haven't in a while, they are full of unique content uh, that may spark some innovation in your own specific program. Briefly, I'll actually toss these into the chat. And I'll do this again at the end of the presentation, just so you have the links kind of in front of you. Uh, looks like it didn't link, but I'll do that in a moment. Um, and once we're finished today, this presentation as well will get posted to the U YouTube page for, for ACAPT. Specific to the webinar, we ask that you kind of keep your screen muted if you don't mind while the presenters are presenting. They will go through um, their presentation. If you have questions that are just brewing while you're, while you're watching, shoot them into the chat for now, and we will pose those questions to them during a specific kind of Q&A session at the end. So just thank you for everyone joining us and thank you to the presenters. This is gonna be um, awesome. So congratulations and I'll kind of pass the reins over to, to Alicia. Okay, hopefully you can see Matt, my uh, PowerPoint up there, my slide deck. Okay, great. Yes, we Hello can. and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you also to ACAPT and NCCE for this opportunity to share our presentation called Fostering Professional Behaviors and Skills by Implementing an Early Part-Time ICE. My name is Dr. Alicia Rabina Amon, and I will be discussing the considerations of an early part-time ICE and describing this experience in our program. We also have with us today SCCE, Dr. Fatima Ghani, clinical instructor, Dr. Tyler Goslinga, and student physical therapist, Amber Orchard. Today's purposes are to describe an early part-time ICE for first-year student physical therapists at the University of the Pacific, and to consider promoting expectations of clinical education behaviors early in the didactic curriculum. Also to explore how an early part-time ICE helps nurture the program to clinic relationship and pave the way for future placement. And here are the objectives. I've been the DCE at UOP here in Stockton, California for just shy of five years. Our program is 25 months long and has five clinical experiences total. One part-time ICE in the first semester, one four-week full-time ICE at the end of the first year, and three full-time clinical education experiences that occur at the end of the program. Today, you're gonna to hear common themes as each presenter speaks. You'll hear the concept of an ICE being early in the program, um, how a part-time ICE is favorable versus a full-time ICE. The concept of hands-on skills for students will be commonly repeated and professional behaviors will be mentioned frequently as well. Lastly, you'll hear the common thread of an early ICE leading to future placement. So first let's ask ourselves some questions regarding the theme of an ICE being early. How early is early? For those of you in academia, should the first clinical experience happen during the first, second or third semester? And if you're an SECE or CI, what level student do you prefer? A first year, second year, or third year student? We acknowledge we all have preferences, but let's ask ourselves if we're open to supervising a very novice student physical therapist or student physical therapist assistant. Perhaps the most essential question we should be asking is, do we wait too long to get students into the clinics for their first clinical experience? Well, when we think about the challenges that novice students have during their first full-time clinical experience, we often see challenges with both psychomotor skills 
and professional behaviors such as safety, professionalism, and communication issues. But you might be thinking right now, well, if the sequencing of our clinical education course is working, why would we change it? And I would reply, what if an early part-time ICE in the first semester could actually enhance student learning, both in the clinic and in the classroom? Might you change your mind? And given the challenges we see students having with professional behaviors, might we start clinical experiences earlier and introduce and expose students at the beginning of the program to the acceptable clinical behaviors expected during future clinical experiences? So now you say, okay, well, let's look a little closer at this early part-time ICE. But you have some valid concerns and some questions might be, do the students even have enough knowledge to enter the clinic at this point? Is it reasonable for an ICE to occur right after matriculation? You might also ask, how do CIs and sites feel about having first semester students? Is this gonna be a hard sell? There are many CIs and sites who don't prefer students even in the first year. And lastly, what are the potential benefits and drawbacks of having a part-time ICE so early in the program? So let's look at some rationale to answer these questions. An early part-time ICE provides an almost immediate opportunity for students to understand and experience the expectations of students when they're in the clinic. So the students might realize, ah, this is what clinical education expectations are, or these are what the desired clinical behaviors look like. Secondly, we start transitioning students immediately into their professional roles. So here at UOP, we call our students junior colleagues. And we emphasize that our students are no longer volunteers or aides, they're no longer the observer. In this way, we facilitate the students right away into becoming future physical therapists and into becoming the cl uh, clinical decision makers. Lastly, a part-time ICE can fit very nicely into an existing course whereas a full-time ICE would take a larger shift in the curriculum. Here at UOP, the part-time ICE lives in a course we call Introduction to Physical Therapist Practice, and it's a one-unit course with half a unit of lecture and half a unit of experiential learning. The course is front-loaded with lectures that include the subjects listed here. The part-time ICE in our program is called Fall Fridays, and we've had Fall Fridays in our program since 2011. It consists of five consecutive Fridays for four hours, either in the morning or the afternoon. And Fall Fridays begin after the sixth week in the first semester of the program. During that same semester, students are also enrolled in anatomy, exam and eval, and patient care skills. And many of the skills learned in these courses are expected to be practiced during Fall Friday. The DCE's job is to make the placements. So I contact established local partners because they know our program, where our students are in the program, and the expectations are appropriate. The placements are primarily in outpatient orthopedic, but we also have a few acute care and skilled nursing facility placements. We ask sites to consider the two to one collaborative learning model where novice students can be more comfortable having peers with them, especially for their first clinical experience. And if we get two placements, then that's one less site that we have to contact to see if they'll take another student. Fall Friday placements tend to be easier placements. Again, we're placing with local established partners. They know our program. The commitment is very minimal. It's four hours per week for five weeks. And anecdotally, the feedback I receive is that CIs really enjoy having Fall Friday students. For the most part, we don't have any difficulty securing Fall Friday placements. Um, if for some reason we don't have um, the needed number of placements, then we start reaching outside to our um, other partners. As DCE, I provide support to the site by explaining the purpose of Fall Fridays, student expectations, and we also supply the site with a resource manual specific to Fall Fridays. I also support and prepare the students by facilitating contact with the clinic, assisting them with requirements and providing them with their clinical ID badges. But probably most importantly, my role is to prepare them, of course, for the clinical experience itself. And that includes the items you see listed here. And now I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Fatima Ghani. 
Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Fatima Ghani. I am the site coordinator of clinical education at Therapy Partners Group, formerly known as Golden Bear Therapy Partners for the last three years. I have about 10 years of SCC experience and my current title is the Director of University Relations and Clinical Experiences. We have over 135 total clinics in the company, but locally we have about 15 clinics that work with this Fall Friday ICE. So I expect communication from the program <clears throat> right about August uh, for the fall Friday ICE placements. Uh, usually we receive a request for placements via exact as a common uh, platform or email. In this case, I prefer email uh, so I can easily um, assess and see where I can have cl clinical spots uh, since we have terminal clinical experiences already in place during this time. So when I'm looking for clinical instructors for this particular uh, part-time ICE, I'm looking for clinical instructors who understand the program. A lot of alumni uh, from UOP tend to be uh, great candidates for this. And anyone who's interested in being a clinical instructor as far as um, understanding uh, what the objectives are. Our clinical instructor program is 100% voluntary and it's a great um, I'm opportunity. Sure. It's a great opportunity um, oh, yeah. to uh, demonstrate uh, there's minimal time requirement with five fall Fridays for four hours, whether it's um, in the morning or afternoon on clinical preference. It's a great time for new CIs who are not quite sure if they really want to have a full time commitment for a a full-time uh, clinical experience to experience a student. Uh, it's also a great opportunity for part-time clinicians who cannot commit to a full-time clinical experience to participate as well. And it's also a great opportunity for new graduates who want to start the role of mentorship, um, especially those who are familiar with our program. A great uh, uh, addition is that there's no lengthy CPI to fill on on a Saturday night, although we do have a grading rubric, uh, which will be discussed later on in this presentation. It's also a great opportunity to overlap with terminal clinical experiences from different universities uh, using the 2-1 model. Uh, students get to see where they will shortly be in a year or two as on their own terminal clinical experiences as well. I also, I'll have clinical instructors may be hesitant to take a student because they will be missing for one of those five Fridays, but usually I reassure the CI that they can either have that student uh, follow, be, follow another clinician in the same clinic, or if that clinician has a student, then they can use the 2-1 model as well. So at that point, I give a list to the program of what clinics are available and how many slots for each clinic. The program then replies with the list of students requested for the clinics. At that point in time, I receive the Fall Friday Resource Manual, and it includes the information related to the clinical experience, expectations to share with the CIs, the syllabus, the assignments, and the grading rubric as well. The program then lets the students know of their placements, and then they start to reach, uh, reach out to me via email. At that point, as the SCCE, I respond to the student and the CI in the same email, introducing them, and they can start communication from there. We also have an onboarding process in our company, uh, which is demonstrated on the next slide, uh, with the emphasis on logistics. So in this first part on our student information sheet, uh, we provide information as in parking, dress code, uh, facilities if needed. I reconfirm the clinical experience dates and the address of the location. We also um, have them initial uh, student expectations and guidelines, uh, reconfirming the importance of professionalism early on in their uh, didactic portion, um, making sure that they're on time and ready to go, not walking in five minutes late with their favorite Starbucks coffee, uh, making sure that we uh, uh, reint uh, reintroduce the importance of HIPAA, not just verbally and written, but electronically as well, and also do introducing the code of conduct of the company to the student also. We expect these students to behave as if they were an employee of the company and just with the re-emphasis on we need to be on time, we need to be courteous, we need to be um, um, team players and respectful to all support staff and our, and our uh, current clinicians as well. We also have the student do a self-assessment um, so that they fill out prior to uh, arriving on their first day. They can start uh, looking at their strengths and, and areas of improvement, what are their expectations of their clinical instructor, and also what are they expecting out of this clinical rotation. That way we start communication early between the CI and the student, um, and then they're good to go on that first day. 
So after onboarding, I really don't have a lot of interaction with the students once I connect them with the CI. Um, that's usually where communication ends unless something pops up where someone's sick and they need coverage. Um, otherwise, I just let the CI know that if they have any questions or concerns that they can contact me or the DCE of the program as a support. So for Fall Friday's feedback, um, I found some interesting information where the, um, the new clinical instructors find that they really enjoy teaching. They find that they really enjoy those aha moments and seeing things click for the student early on. They also find that they understand more about the fundamentals than they thought uh, as far as um, you know, teaching a student in their very basics in that first, uh, first semester. And then they're finding that they have thought provoking conversations with the students and they're starting to have early conversations about topics as the importance of comorbidities, um, clinical reasoning and differential diagnosis as well. Some interesting patient feedback that we've received also is that, uh, wow, the patients tell their, their providers, I know a whole lot more than I thought. And this is due to the fact that we, ha we have this emphasis on patient-friendly um, conversations with our patients to ensure um, they understand their rehabilitation. And then we turn around and we talk to our students and we're talking with our medical terminology. And so the patient really sees um, that their clinician really understands um, what's going on with them, and that creates just a, a stronger bond between the two. So in conclusion, Fall Fridays is a great introduction to teaching for many clinicians into the role of the CI. It lets them get their feet wet, lets them have the opportunity to teach without um, to really committing to a long-term clinical experience. Fall Friday is a great introduction for students as well. We need to start that expectation of professionalism and communication from the beginning, so that way they're ready to go on their terminal clinical experiences as well. Many CIs and clinics are open to receive the student back after these Fall Friday ICE experiences, uh, whether as a terminal clinical experience or even open to a, um, another short-term intermediate, such as a four or six week uh, student. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Dr. Tyler Goslinga to present the perspective of the clinical instructor. Hello, yes, uh, my name is Tyler Goslinga. I've been a physical therapist for six years. I've been a CI for five of those years. Um, I've taken about 15 students and they have ranged from part-time ICEs uh, like our fall Fridays to four week students to the long-term terminal clinical education experiences as well. I'm currently uh, employed at Golden Bear Physical Therapy, where I'm the clinic manager. Um, and overall, I just, I really enjoy taking students at all phases of their learning. Um, I enjoy all aspects of it, and I, and I enjoy the chance to talk to students at different points in their education. So the CI perspective of Fall Fridays, um, really we're looking to deliver early clinical perspectives that the students can associate with their classroom learning. Um, up to this point in the first semester, they haven't had the opportunity to be in the clinic at all. So a lot of their knowledge is theoretical or textbook based. So the chance to pair that classroom learning with clinical experience really does um, help bolster that learning for that student. We're also learning, looking to develop soft skills early on, um, communication being the big one, but also things like building patient rapport, um, showing compassion, caring, that sort of thing. These soft skills are really important in being an effective clinician. So we feel the earlier students are exposed to those, the better off they are. We get a chance to encourage students in the middle of a challenging first semester. It's a big transition from undergrad to graduate programs. Um, some students might be struggling um, and a few positive uplifting words from a CI can really go a long ways in lifting their spirits. And the last thing is, um, it's mentioned by Dr. Rabina Ahmed and Dr. Ghani, but having a CI familiar with the program does help understand the purpose of these early ICEs and can create a better experience for both the students and the CI. Um, so, so kind of the purpose of the Fall Fridays from the CI perspective, uh, we have a unique opportunity in this first semester, in this early ICE, to help the students gain early clinical experience while learning the same materials in the classroom. Learning it theoretically, um, is great, but I know myself and a lot of my classmates, and I'm sure a lot of physical therapists in general are kinesthetic learners. So the chance to get our hands on, on live patients who are presenting with actual impairments is really beneficial. Um, up to this point, most of their learning has been lab learning on healthy classmates who typically don't show uh, any actual impairments. So a chance to work with patients who have some of these impairments can bolster their learning as well. 
Um, and it's a refreshing reminder for these students. They get a chance to see uh, their CIs in action and, and a chance to view um, what they're working towards becoming, why they're studying so hard, why they're putting all this time in. So the chance to kind of um, dip their toes in the water and see what they're working towards is nice for them as well. So some of the objectives we have as clinical instructors, uh, we're looking to come alongside students. We wanna work with them and, and treat them as peers. It was mentioned previously, we don't wanna treat them as aides or techs or students getting observation hours. Uh, we wanna treat them uh, as we would a, a fellow clinician. Um, and, and that's one of the biggest things we try to strive to do early on in these ICEs. Um, I touched on it, but I mentioned it again, the clinical guidance in, versus the classroom lecture. Uh, a chance for the students to, to get a clinical perspective from their CIs who aren't, you know, your tr traditional professors um, and can offer a viewpoint from the view of the clinician that uh, may be a little bit different and offer some different viewpoints than their professors. We want to make sure we're meeting the students where they're at. Um, Dr. Ghani mentioned that the students for UOP do fill out, or through Golden Bear, I should say, do fill out a kind of self-assessment. They talk about how they like to receive feedback, how they like to, uh, when they like to receive feedback, um, and, and some of their own strengths and weaknesses. So having that sheet filled out really helps, but also having that discussion early on in the early ICE helps establish a good working relationship between the CI and the student. Um, we also want to get them early exposure to the ideas of clinical reasoning. That's something that we don't often receive in this first semester of schooling as a lot of our learning is foundational. So getting some early exposure to the basics of clinical reasoning is a good thing for these students early on in their education. So some of the keys to student success. Um, I have touched on it before and I touch on it again. This is not an observational experience. We wanna allow Those interactions between students and patients um, will really help bolster their learning um, and create a good experience for the student and the CI. Uh, next slide. Oh, there we go. Um, so we like to encourage active learning. We want to allow the students to practice and progress throughout the experience. We want to avoid creating a passive environment um, and part of that is finding a patient early on in the experience that the students can follow throughout the course of this early ICE. Um, the chance for them to follow uh, a few patients throughout a plan of care is really beneficial in their learning. They do get a chance to see how things might progress with manual skills, movement assessment, exercise prescription, um, and things like that. Um, it does also give us a chance to possibly introduce manual skills to these students earlier than they might learn in school. Obviously, we don't want to teach them anything they're not ready for, but uh, sometimes the basics of, of manual therapy can be taught to these students, especially when they get a chance to see a, a patient on consecutive weeks. Um, that can allow them to progress their learning as well. So we like to cater to the type of student that we have. I briefly mentioned it before with those forms that we receive uh, with the student assessments and having those conversations early on. But I think two of the biggest things that we want to establish with the type of student that we have um, the first being, how do they like to receive their feedback? Do they, do they like knowledge of performance? Do they prefer knowledge of results or a combination of both? Um, and when do they like to receive it? Do they prefer uh, immediate feedback? Do they prefer delayed feedback? Um, a lot of times, if we have a shy or timid student, they might prefer to receive their feedback in private. That way, they don't um, feel uncomfortable receiving that in front of a patient. Um, and when we have those shy and timid students, we want to be uh, we want to be accommodating to that, but we also want to be a little extra encouraging, really encourage them to take these opportunities to learn um, and, and let them know they have nothing to worry about um, and, and encourage that opportunity for them. Um, as CIs, we really want to create a conducive learning environment based on these things, on the student's style of learning, based on their personality. Uh, we want to create a comfortable environment where they feel like they're going to succeed and excel the most. So we also work towards as CIs creating adult learning qualities. Um, a CI can create the best learning environment available, but uh, there is some responsibility that's placed on the student to take some initiative. Um, if they don't take the initiative to learn, take the opportunities that the CI is presenting to them, um, it can be a subpar experience for them and, and possibly make it more challenging for the CI. Um, ways we can work towards accomplishing this is we wanna be really transparent with the student. We wanna create clear expectations of what we expect from them but we also want to let them know what they can expect from us. 
We want to, we want to discuss their responsibilities, what we might want to see as far as skill development um, and practice uh, and additional learning that maybe happens outside of the clinical experience. Um, and the biggest part of all of that is putting that all together in an actionable plan. Uh, we want to, like I said, be very clear about what we expect from them, from them. And if there's not a clear plan in place, it can be more challenging to accomplish the goals that the, both the student and CI have. So along with um, fostering adult learning, we, we do have some more traditional learning and assignments that go on. Um, the assignments include creating gas goals for patients, um, having the student have a chance to document initial and daily SOAP notes, um, and they do get a chance upon returning to campus to have a presentation, um, hopefully on one of the patients they were able to see uh, multiple times throughout the experience, um, but they do get a chance to present to their peers on their experience um, and discuss some of the nuances of things they may have seen in the clinic. So some of the active learning that goes on um, in these early ICE experiences is that um, but they have a chance to practice skills they've learned in those first semester courses. Uh, Dr. Rabin Ahmed mentioned it. We uh, have courses including patient care skills, therapeutic modalities, kinesiology, anatomy, and examination and evaluation. Um, skills they learn in these classes include taking subjective reports, objective measurements, including range of motion, manual muscle tests, and special tests, along with creating a safe uh, patient treatment environment. Uh, and we really wanna make sure they have a chance to practice and develop each of these skills um, as part of their active learning assignments. So as we've mentioned before, these are not terribly long experiences. You know, it's uh, five weeks, four hours each day, or I should say five days, once a week for four hours each day. Um, and due to that, we do tend to progress pretty quickly throughout each of these experiences. Um, there are only five weeks, and therefore we should have a goal of getting a patient to assist with the, an evaluation, typically for sure this objective and maybe whatever objective portions they're comfortable with in one of those first two Fridays. Um, this does give them the chance to follow that patient throughout the course of several weeks, um, throughout the course of a plan of care. Uh, and not only does it give them the chance to have a good presentation for the class, but uh, I also strongly believe that the chance to follow uh, even one or even several patients throughout the course of a plan of care gives them the chance to see how things might progress, regress, um, and how the CI as a clinician will uh, adjust that as needed. So additional learning. Um, one of the big things we, we focus on um, due to limited learning up to that point as far as manual skills and things like that is the soft skills um, and communication especially. This really is the low-hanging low fruit. Uh, these are low-risk interactions between students and patients. There's not, um, there's really not any risk to the student talking to the patient. Um, and communication being such an important skill that us as physical therapists need to develop, um, the earlier and the more often students get a chance to practice this can really help them to, to develop into uh, even better clinicians. So we also have a summative assessment. Uh, this is in lieu of the CPI. Um, we have a performance rubric that's created by University of the Pacific, um, and it's given to us uh, as CIs to review with the student. Um, as you can see on the next slide, there are 10 areas we're looking to assess. Um, the first eight really focus on professional behavior. Um, kind of like with communication, you know, we talked about the rest of these are also kind of the low risk, low hanging fruit things that we can expect from students, um, even with their limited knowledge in the program so far. Um, and then numbers nine and 10 there are more examination based. This is the chance for the student to practice the skills they have learned. Um, and we want to make sure they have those opportunities. Uh, we grade this pretty straightforward. Uh, we either mark that they're still progressing, they've met expectations. Um, or there are even chances that maybe they didn't have an opportunity to practice or observe uh, one of these categories. So uh, we grade them accordingly to that. So as someone who has experienced these Fall Fridays as a student uh, and now as a CI as well, um, Dr. Ghani and Dr. Rubina Amen have mentioned it and I, and I wanna mention it again, having good clinical partnerships really makes a big difference. Um, Amber will talk about it uh, a little more in depth coming up here, but having a good CI who's aware of their role, of the early ICE's role in the student's education 
can really make or break an experience. Um, so having someone who is a good clinical partner and aware of those roles can really facilitate the best learning environment for the student. So my view as a Fall Friday CI, personally, I really enjoy seeing the light bulb moments. Um, these students are getting the really their first opportunity to connect their classroom learning uh, in a clinical setting and seeing them connect the dots between what they might've seen in their notes or their textbooks or what their professor's talking about to actual physical patients um, is really exciting. And I enjoy those moments with the, with the students. Um, we also get a chance to mold future PTs early education, or early in their education, I should say. Um, we get a chance at early exposure to both clinical reasoning, along with introducing evidence-based practice early on in their education, um, and, and hopefully create a trend throughout their education and their early practicing as a clinician to uh, really lean heavily on both of those things. Um, and, I, and I mentioned it again, because I mentioned it a couple of times, but I really do think it's, it's a neat opportunity for us as CIs. We get to encourage these students. Um, they're in the middle of a difficult first semester. It's a big change for a lot of these, for a lot of these students. Um, and positive, kind words from a CI can really give them the, the boost uh, that they need to, to continue pushing through in a difficult semester. And uh, possible future placements. Um, Dr. Ghani mentioned this, and I mentioned it as well as a clinical manager. Uh, I do really enjoy the chance to see these Fall Friday students possibly come back for full-time rotations or even as possible employees, uh, creating these relationships and these networking opportunities for both students and CIs is, is really awesome, um, and it helps everyone work towards pushing our profession forward. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Amber Orchard. She's a student physical therapist at University of the Pacific, uh, and she'll be talking about some of the research we did on these early ICE experiences, along with her experience as a student. Thank you, Dr. Gosslinger. As previously mentioned, my name is Amber Orchard. I'm a first year student physical therapist at University of the Pacific's physical therapy class of 2023. I'm really excited to share with you guys our post ICE survey, as well as our findings, and to be able to give you my real and true student perspective as to how the Fall Friday experience went for me. So we came up with the idea to collect data in order to get a better understanding of the real student perspectives of the UOP DPT class of 2023. That included all the common themes that have been mentioned previously in this um, presentation thus far, such as professionalism, communication, application of learned skills, and more. Our study was approved by the UOP IRB, and it was completely anonymous. The survey consisted of 10 Likert scale questions, as well as three open-ended questions, and there was a population of 36 students that took the survey, not including myself. Our hypothesis for this study is that clinical expectations of skills and professional behaviors are promoted in student physical therapists through the utilization of an early part-time integrated clinical experience. The next slide will outline these specific professional behaviors and skills that were measured in this survey, but on top of all of these, we really also wanted to look at if the students really genuinely enjoyed the Fall Friday experience and that they found it beneficial to their learning experience. As you can see here, we have listed the 10 Likert scale questions that really emphasize our hypothesis. These questions are scored on a scale of zero to four, zero being strongly disagree and four being strongly agree. The questions focus a lot on professional behaviors, appearance, student to patient and CI communication, application of learned skills, use of the ICF model, documentation, and lastly, the importance of the ICE itself in choosing UOP over other schools and whether or not the ICE was beneficial. So we've presented our data into some subcategories. So as you can see on this slide, questions one through four all dealt with areas of professional practice. And if we go ahead and look at our mean numbers, these represent that students either agreed or strongly agreed that Fall Fridays helped facilitate professional behaviors, appearance, and patient and CI communication. Our standard deviations for each of our questions are low, and the median responses were all fours or strongly agrees. Our interquartile range was also consistent at one, and that means that for the middle 50% of the data we collected, answers were between three and four, or agree or strongly agree. Moving on to our next set of data, questions five through nine all dealt with areas related to practice management. 
Our mean numbers for the set, even though slightly lower than the means for questions one through four, are consistent and still resemble that students overall agreed that they were able to practice and apply learned skills in the clinic that we've had in our classes that first semester. Our standard deviation has slightly more variability, but still remains in a consistent pattern for this set. Our median column shows that all threes or agrees, and our IQR is larger for this category, um, except uh, question seven, which related to application of the ICF model in patient cases. Having a zero here means that the middle 50% of our data for this question all yielded the same answer, which in this case was a three or an agree. Lastly, question 10 stated, I did not find participating in Fall Fridays beneficial. And as you can see here, this data is very consistent with almost every student recording a zero or a strongly disagree to this answer. Our standard deviation remains under one and our median score was zero, which was to be expected with all the amount of answers that responded that zero. Our IQR of one, meaning that middle 50% of the data was between zero or one or strongly disagree and disagree, which supports a positive experience with the fall Fridays for students in my cohort. Now we're gonna move on to the open-ended question aspect of the survey. We focused on three main questions that asked for students to briefly explain their answer to question 10. For example, participating in fall, participating in fall Fridays was or was not beneficial. And we didn't end up including this question in our thematic analysis due to some misinterpretation and limited responses by students who took the survey. And then the last two questions consisted of listing one to three drawbacks of the Fall Friday experience, and also to list one to three things that students enjoyed the most about the experience. From this, Dr. Rabina Amin, Dr. Goslinga, and myself all got together to perform thematic analysis on the responses and came up with three to four strongly confirmed themes per question. So if we go ahead and look at this First question, the drawbacks to Fall Fridays. The themes we found to be most prominent included, one, that the experience happened too early in the program and students were feeling like they had limited knowledge prior to starting. Two, the ice was too short and students were left with wanting more time in the clinic and more time hands-on with patients. And three, the CI lack of awareness or of students' active role in the Fall Fridays. Now, if we go ahead and look down at the uh, perspectives of the positive experiences, we found common themes that working with patients and having patient interactions, application of learned skills from classes, having a good CI, and the overall clinic exposure and experience all proved to be the most prominent highlights of the Fall Fridays for the students in my cohort. So from what the survey has told us, the main takeaways of Fall Fridays are that students overall found the ICE to be a beneficial and positive learning experience, and also that our hypothesis is supported and that the practice of skills and the importance of professional behaviors were recognized by student physical therapists through the utilization of this early part-time ICE. Also, upon taking a closer look at the data and comparing responses between both the 10 Likert scale questions as well as the three open-ended questions, Dr. Gosslinga came up with three statements that describe patterns we all found interesting upon taking this closer look at our results. The first being that an involved or aware CI was not as important to a good experience, while on the contrast, a less involved or unaware CI was more likely to contribute to a poor experience. Two, that early opportunity to practice learned skills and have patient interaction was the most mentioned positive response to what students enjoyed most about the Fall Friday. And three, that having an ice too early did appear to be a common theme as a drawback. However, this only represents answers from nine out of the 36 students that took this survey. And this requires a more in-depth look at the data in, in order to draw conclusions as to why they felt this way compared to the rest of the cohort who didn't find this to be an issue. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into my perspective of Fall Fridays. And with that being said, I had a wonderful experience overall. I got to work with an amazing CI and I truly loved the clinic I was in and the variability of patient cases I was able to observe. The true highlights of this experience for me was being able to see those real patients as a student physical therapist for the first time since starting the program. And also with that, being able to work with them and apply my newly acquired goniometry, palpation, and manual muscle testing skills. 
As mentioned before in this presentation, up until this Fall Friday experience, I had only been working with my healthy, well-bodied classmates. And as I'm very happy that they are healthy and well-bodied, being able to be hands-on with real patients who have real impairments was truly an eye-opening experience for me. I had the pleasure of working with a wonderful CI who was a University of the Pacific alumni and really got to work on my professionalism in the clinic as well as my communication between her and also the patients I had the pleasure of seeing and observing. My CI did a really, really good job of encouraging a positive learning environment. She was a student in my same shoes just a few years prior, taking the same classes, sitting in the same seats. And she really understood the program and the expectations that are placed on students to learn and succeed as physical therapists at University of the Pacific. All of these factors in turn really boosted my self-confidence and overall reinforced my passion for physical therapy. I left Fall Fridays knowing that I had truly found my niche and that physical therapy still remains the dream career for me. On the flip side, some cons to Fall Fridays, which as I disclosed, I had a wonderful experience. I personally did not have any of my own cons, but after discussing with some classmates each week after our rotations and doing some reflection as to how the experience could have been affected or could have been different for me, I came up with just a few cons. First off, the early ice is heavily dependent on the CI, and this could be due to every physical therapist having their own teaching, practice style, or philosophy for how they work with their patients and how they provide treatment. This could also be, as mentioned earlier in our presentation, that the CI is unsure or unaware of the requirements and expectations of the students by not knowing where they are in the program and what classes they have received or are currently receiving. This could be a novice CI who's trying this out for the first time, or if we acquired a new partner that is not familiar with University of the Pacific and what we do um, with these Fall Fridays in our curriculum. However, as Dr. Gosslinga mentioned, a CI can only do so much. And I do personally believe that as doctoral students, it is our personal responsibility to challenge ourselves and to get outside of our comfort zone in order to really learn. In the clinic, Shy and outgoing students might have different experiences and involvement in this early ICE. And I also believe that expectations of the student prior to starting the ICE um, has a role in how the student may deem the experience as successful or not. For example, some students might expect that their CI allow them to be more involved or more hands-on with their patients for where we are in our curriculum. And some may have expected to do way less than what their CI actually had them do. So in wrapping up, I just wanna briefly revisit a few of the themes from our presentation um, that we have repeatedly stated over and over. The concept of early. We have learned that first year student physical therapists who participate in an early part-time ICE in this first semester, recognize expectations of practicing clinical skills and the importance of professional behaviors. Part-time. We've discussed how it's easier to work an early part-time ICE into existing curriculum versus trying to work in a full-time ICE to your programs so that are already well-oiled machines and operate in a very specific way. Hands-on skills. We have found that first-year student physical therapists who participate in an early part-time ICE in the first semester recognize the expectations of practicing those clinical skills. Professional behaviors. We've also found that they recognize the importance of exhibiting professional behaviors, such as punctuality, appearance, communication, and more. And lastly, placements. We have heard from all presenters that Fall Friday placements can definitely lead to future full-time clinical experiences and even open up the door for employment after graduation. So on the next slide, you will see our references. And once again, I just wanna thank everyone here for attending today and for hearing about our early part-time ICE model. I'll now be opening up the floor for questions or comments. Thank you. I think I can speak for the group. That was amazing. <clears throat> Thank you guys. What a great resource. So much information in, in, a, in a tight bit of time. That was absolutely amazing. Um, a few firsts that I'd like to mention. Amber, to put you on the spot, I did kind of before the call as well. It is awesome to have you uh, presenting and part of this as a student. I think this completes the spectrum of what clinical education is. So it's incredible to have you here. Um, and, and kudos, you're, you're on your way for sure. Uh, other first. The chat was filled with questions. This is the most questions we've ever had. This is great. Um, so I know the topic is definitely like um, hot on people's minds. So 
In the interest of time, what I think I'll do is walk back through some of the questions that were posed um, throughout the presentation on the chat. We'll be mindful of time, so we'll kind of run all the way up to three o'clock. Um, and if other things kind of aren't answered yet, we'll we'll get the information to you somehow. But I appreciate everyone's kind of engagement uh, in this presentation. I think the best place to start is perhaps um, Alicia, you can you can walk us back through like what is the cohort size that you're dealing with? Um, just walk us back through exactly how many students are going how many sites you're utilizing to make this all happen. And I think that'll be a jumping spot for us. Thank you. So in general, we, um, most of our cohorts are 36 students. Um, Pre-pandemic, we probably placed at least half of the students in two to one models. So we did not have to contact as many clinics to get placements. Of course, uh, during and after the pandemic, there was concern about the number of bodies that were in each clinic. and so. I would say that we probably are down to um, maybe 10 students having a two to one now, but I think it's opening back up. Gotcha. And then have, have you played around with other things? There's a number of questions around, have you done any pairings with first year learners and second year learners, or have you played around with um, perhaps shortening the experience, but lengthening the duration of it? Have you guys tinkered with any of those kind of yeah. qualities? Right. Um, the timing of the other clinical experiences in our program are not conducive to sending our students out at the same time. But like Dr. Glossenba mentioned, many times these clinics already have other students, even if they're from other um, universities at their sites. So um, that allows for those two students to work together, of course. As far as altering the time limit, I wouldn't shorten it um, to two hours because of course, cancellations can happen, right? Or census can be down. So four hours, I think, allows a little more time to get some patients in the clinic if that were to happen, but also for practice, you know, practice between students, the I and student, um, staff members, that sort of a thing. Um, could we lengthen the part-time ice to full day? That actually could happen. That actually could be a consideration. Yeah, good question. Yep. And again, they run for five weeks, correct? And we've not done things longer than five weeks. So we haven't done eight or 10 weeks or something like that. Not for the part-time ICE. And, and part of it is um, the course that it lives in is only one unit. So if we were to consider that, we'd have to increase the units, which would affect the entire curriculum. But um, four weeks for uh, since 2011 seems to be working pretty well. And each year we dial in a little bit more and try and make improvements. Perfect. And, and I think that kind of spills into the next question that was posed early on in the presentation, which was, how do you guys balance like the credit allocation? Do, do the hours match up? Or are we asking students to do more or less within that, that credit that's available? Yes. Um, great question, because we actually two years ago looked at that and um, trued it up. So it is still one unit. It's half a unit of lecture and half a unit of um, clinical experience, and the units and the hours do match up um, pretty well to the university policy. They match up exactly to the university policy. Great. Yeah. And I think these, these two questions are probably more posed to the clinical side of the equation, but um, someone said the P word, I saw productivity in there, so that automatically comes up when we start talking ICE, so I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on, on that and how that works amongst your, your clinical settings. And then there was a question recently posed about um, you know, they're, they're, they're short experiences. There's lots happening. We're trying to progress quickly through them. How do we maintain a level of consistency amongst that? Um, I know you guys have the rubric, but if you can speak to perhaps productivity within the clinical setting and, um, and consistency, we'd love to hear that. Dr. Boslinga. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, just to clarify, are we talking like productivity, like uh, on the CI's caseload or what are we talking about? That's my understanding. It seems like that's how the question was kind of posed, which is, you know, the, the burden of perhaps, um, you know, mini orienting the student to that particular day, getting the rounding of the cases and then, you know, still getting on with your clinical day. I'll yeah, for guess. sure. That's what it was. Um, I, I think part of the benefit there is, especially for newer CIs or people who are unfamiliar, the half day does help. <laughs> if you fall behind on charting or anything like that, you do have kind of the rest of the day to catch up. Um, I personally have not experienced any drops in productivity of any sort. Um, I typically maintain my schedule the way it is. I, I maybe block off like 15 minutes 
on the first day they're here just to give them a little mini orientation, show them around the clinic, discuss like the basics of how I like to do things. Um, but I, I usually try and take the opportunities with the students. Um, I usually have a pretty good idea of which patients of mine will be acceptive and receptive to students. Um, so I do try and get those students just to have an opportunity to have some hands-on experience early on, um, as Dr. Rubina Amen mentioned. Um, occasionally there is a drop in census or a light day or things like that, or cancellations happen. Um, and, and personally, I take those opportunities to, that's when I'll take the students aside and say, hey, let's, let's review this skill or, or let's practice this or discuss something we saw with our last patient. Um, so I haven't personally had any issues with productivity and association with these shorter students. Um, I feel like just working them in and I, I talk out loud a lot more, but <laughs> other than that, I, you know, I really explain my process as I do it, which patients don't typically hear, but um, yeah, no, I think it, it doesn't have a huge effect on that. Great, great. Um, and then I think it spills into Stephen's recent question, which is um, we spoke of that grading rubric. Um, it seemed like they had to successfully complete eight if, if my memory serves me. And what are we doing about failures? How often is, are failures occurring? Are we doing remediations? How are we tucking that into to this coursework? That's uh, a great question, Stephen, because um, knock on wood, I haven't had a failure just yet. Um, and that would be difficult, but it would also be a good thing because if there is a red flag, we wanna catch it real early, right? Um, and this is a great opportunity to remediate a student right off the bat on any of these. Um, so I have not had to set up um, you know, a second experience for someone who might not have made it. Uh, there is that importance of um, communication between myself and the site, the CIs. Um, Fatima's uh, also involved in that with going over that rubric with the clinicians and so that they know to provide experiences um, and opportunities for students to actually have this item checked off. Again, Dr. Gosselin mentioned, this is low hanging fruit. These are things our students at this stage should be able to do. And so if they're given the opportunity, hopefully they'll are, they're able to meet that. And to kind of piggyback on that, um, <laughs> I, I say this a little tongue in cheek, but I feel like if a student fails a fall Friday, the CI is also failing. Um, to an extent, just because this, this uh, like like Dr. Rubina Men just mentioned, it the rubric doesn't have too many uh, clinical skills on it besides some basic things that they have learned. So if the rest of it, if they haven't had an opportunity or for some reason they're failing, I do feel like um, that is where we we've talked about having a really aware or involved CI really can make or break an experience. So I feel like that's also a big thing that um, as as universities and as as programs and and companies. Um, finding those connections can really help make sure we're fostering that, that ideal learning experience for the students. Wonderful. Um, and I think that the last one I'll, I'll fire out, and this is kind of posed um, with registration, had more to do with like the, the onboarding process that you guys are, are using um, for different clinical sites. So I heard um, talk of, you know, HIPAA compliance and pieces like that. I think just maybe just give us, um, paint us the picture of what that onboarding looks like, who's in charge of it, how that's occurring would be great. I'm sure I can answer that. Um, I think for me personally, um, I found there's a big hole and I'm sure a lot of you can attest to between uh, CIs being prepared and the student going out. So I'm trying to bridge that gap between CI support within our company and um, the student being welcomed in a professional manner instead of the CI just finding out, oh, by next week, you got a student coming in by the way, you know, kind of thing. And so the, if I can bridge that gap and create content that where the student feels like they're coming on um, and being welcomed properly and the CI also getting support and information prior, then there's less, um, I guess, confusion as, as things get started and then everyone's starting off on the right foot. Um, so the onboarding is very, it's, it's only about two pages or so. I broke it up on the slide so it could be a little bit more visible, but just kind of reconfirming um, the expectations of professionalism, uh, the need to make sure that we're compliant. All, all these students are coming in already with uh, HIPAA certificates anyway, but just to kind of reconfirm the importance of that as well um, in professional setting um, and it's the law. And so things like that and being them being able to um, 
being able to reflect on themselves and also just start conversations with their CIs because a lot of times they're meeting for the first day, that first day, their students are already overwhelmed, you know, coming in um, with their first site and a new place and the CIs are like, okay, I got a student, I got to fit them into my day somehow. So if we can kind of ease that a little bit, that was the whole point of the onboarding process for our company anyway, and it's just a quick email and another person to say hello to if they need help. Wonderful, wonderful. Look at us, and we're one minute before the end. I, I absolutely love it and appreciate the the work today. Um, for for those that perhaps joined us a little bit late, these webinars are running every other month or so. We have one coming up in July. If you're interested in showcasing some work that you're doing within your academic or clinical institution, please do reach out to the NCCE. If you scroll up within the chat, there's a number of different links that link to uh, resources like this one that'll get shared on ACAP's uh, YouTube page, uh, ways to get in contact with myself if you're interested in doing a webinar, and just ways to keep on staying engaged in clinical education. So we appreciate so many people jumping in in the middle of a day, and, uh, and thank you so much to the presenters. This was an excellent, excellent resource for everyone. Thank you.